If you have diabetes, your body does not use or store sugar properly. This can cause changes in your veins, arteries, and capillaries that carry blood throughout your body, including your eyes. These changes can harm your vision. There are a number of eye problems that can be associated with diabetes, including cataracts and glaucoma. This video, however, will discuss diabetic retinopathy, a disease that damages the retina of the eye. There are two types of diabetic retinopathy that can lead to vision loss. One type is called nonproliferative diabetic retinopathy, or NPDR. Another type is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or PDR. But here, we'll be looking at NPDR. We'll meet people who have NPDR, talk about how it occurs, and what you and your ophthalmologist can do to control the progress of this disease and how to prevent vision loss. First, to understand diabetic retinopathy and how it affects your vision, let's take a look at how the eye works. Light rays enter the eye through the cornea, pupil, and lens. These light rays pass through the vitreous, a clear gel-like substance that fills the middle of the eye. The light rays are focused on the retina, a light-sensitive tissue lining the back of the eye. The macula is a very small area at the center of the retina that gives us our fine pinpoint central vision. The area of retina surrounding the macula gives us our peripheral or side vision. The retina converts the light rays into signals that are sent through the optic nerve to the brain. I know of four members in my family, all on my mother's side, that had diabetes. About 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with adult onset diabetes. And about 10 years ago, I noticed my vision was getting blurry. Diabetes can cause your vision to change even if you don't have retinopathy. Quick rises and dips in your blood sugar levels can change the shape of your eye's lens, and this can cause your vision to blur. You can reduce episodes of blurred vision by keeping good control of your blood sugar. Also, if you have diabetes, you should see your ophthalmologist every year for dilated eye exams. This is very important because while vision loss from retinopathy can't be reversed, it can often be controlled if it's detected early. Remember, even though you may not notice any changes in your vision, your ophthalmologist may discover a problem during an exam. Let's take a closer look at NPDR and how it affects your vision. With non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or NPDR, damaged blood vessels in the retina begin to leak fluids, including small amounts of blood, into the retina. Sometimes deposits of fats may leak inside the retina. These deposits are called hard exudates. Many people with diabetes can have a mild form of NPDR that doesn't affect their vision. Problems can occur, however, if the disease progresses with conditions called macular edema and macular ischemia. Your ophthalmologist will look for signs of these conditions during your routine examinations. So, what are macular edema and macular ischemia, and how do they affect your vision? With macular edema, fluid leaking from the retina's blood vessels can cause the macula to swell or thicken. Because the macula is responsible for our central or pinpoint vision, macula edema interferes with clear vision. Macular ischemia occurs when small blood vessels close. In this case, your macula is affected because it no longer receives enough blood to work properly. Macular edema, where the macula swells, is the most common form of vision loss for people with diabetes, particularly if it's left untreated. There are treatments that can help to stabilize vision affected by macular edema, and we'll look more closely at these treatment options in a moment. For macular ischemia, where blood vessels in the macula close, there is no treatment. I went to see a retina specialist, and he discovered the swelling of the macula, and that's what was causing 
the blurriness. During an eye exam, your ophthalmologist will dilate your pupils and examine your retina. Because certain conditions with NPDR, such as macular edema and macular ischemia, occur inside the layers of retina tissue, it may be recommended that you have a test called fluorescein angiography, or another called optical coherence tomography, known as OCT. These diagnostic procedures allow your ophthalmologist to see blood vessels within the retina. Here's how they work. With fluorescein angiography, a small amount of yellow dye is injected into your arm where it circulates through all the blood vessels in the body, including those in the retina. A special camera with a blue flash is then used to take a series of pictures of the retina. Any blood vessels that have been affected by NPDR will show up in these images, as well as areas of abnormal leakage or ischemia. The images from fluorescein angiography show the ophthalmologist if any blood vessels are leaking, how much leakage there is, and if any blood vessels are closed. With OCT, a special camera is used to photograph your retina. It measures the thickness of the retina and is also very sensitive at detecting swelling and fluid. This diagnostic information helps your doctor determine why your vision is blurred and whether treatment should be started. If macular edema is found, laser surgery is often used to reduce swelling of the macula. It's usually performed in an office setting. Here's how it works. For macular edema, the laser is focused on the retina outside the center of the macula. The laser is not applied directly to the center of the macula since this would reduce central vision. The main goal of treatment is to prevent more vision loss by sealing off leaking blood vessels that interfere with the proper function of the macula. Multiple laser treatments may be needed for the best results. Also, keep in mind that people who have developed blurred vision from macular edema may not recover their full, normal vision. We started with laser treatments, and that wasn't working, so we went on to medication and I am now getting injections, and we've been doing that now for about six months. Medication injection therapy is also being used to treat macular edema. Two drugs, steroids and anti-VEGF agents, have shown promise in reducing diabetic macular edema. Anti-VEGF drugs target a specific chemical in your eye, This chemical, called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF, appears to play a role in causing abnormal leakage from retinal vessels. Several drugs have been developed that can block the trouble-causing VEGF. An anti-VEGF drug can help reduce leakage and swelling within the retina, which helps to slow or prevent vision loss, and in some cases, even improve vision. Medication injection therapy is performed in the doctor's office. An anesthetic is used to numb the eye. And a tiny needle is inserted into the eye to deliver medication near the retina. My vision is better. It is better. We still have a little way to go. <laughs> it should be remembered that the main goal of treatment for diabetic retinopathy is to prevent further vision loss. If you treat retinopathy early, it's not likely that total blindness will occur. Remember, treatment does not cure diabetic retinopathy, but it is often effective in preventing further vision loss. Most people with diabetes can retain useful vision. It's important to remember that you can significantly lower your risk of vision loss by maintaining strict control of your blood sugar and any medical conditions. You must also know that diabetic retinopathy can still occur even if your blood sugar is controlled. That means that you should see your ophthalmologist at least once a year, or more frequently, as recommended by your eye doctor, even if you're not having any visual symptoms. Also, if you have any changes in your vision, you should call your ophthalmologist right away. To find out more about diabetic retinopathy and how to maintain your vision, talk with your ophthalmologist.